On this edition of MC Gen Kim, Solubility in Net Ionic Equations. Compounds that are soluble will dissolve in water. Compounds that are insoluble will not dissolve in water. One characteristic of soluble compounds is the production of ions in a solution. Salts dissociate into ions when they dissolve, which means that they are a good conductor of electricity. These substances are called electrolytes. In solution, sodium chloride will dissolve in water and will break into the ions of Na plus and Cl minus. Na plus will be attracted to the oxygen in water and Cl minus will be attracted to the H in water. There are several factors used to determine the solubility of ionic compounds. One important factor is the strength of the attractive forces between the anions and cations of the compound. This can be used using Coulomb's law which is F equals K times Q1 times Q2 divided by R squared, where K is a constant, Q1 and Q2 are the magnitudes of the charges, and R is the distance between the two charges. The bigger the difference between charges shows a greater attraction between the two charges, meaning that this compound will be less likely to dissociate into ions. If there is not a big difference between the two charges, then it will have a weaker attractive force, meaning that it will be likely to dissociate into ions. In reactions that occur between aqueous solutions that form precipitants or a solid, these reactions can be written in the form of a net ionic equation. For example, the reaction between calcium chloride and potassium carbonate will form calcium carbonate and potassium chloride. Calcium carbonate is a solid. This is called your molecular equation. To determine the ionic equation, break up your aqueous solutions into their separate ions. To determine the net ionic equation, cancel out your spectator ions. Spectator ions are ions that exist as a reactant and a product. In this case, our spectator ions are chloride and potassium. Our final net ionic equation is Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus forming calcium carbonate. In this lab, you will need solutions given to you by your professor, a 12-well spot plate, a conductivity meter, and of course, don't forget your goggles. Place 10 drops of each solution into their own well on the spot plate and label each well according to your lab manual. Test the conductivity of each solution. If the light is blinking, then it is a strong electrolyte. If the light does not light up, then the solution is not a conductor. As you can see here, the light is blinking, indicating that this is a strong electrolyte. Following the procedure in your lab manual, create mixtures of your solutions to see which one will form a precipitate. Record your results in your lab notebook. Here is an example of what your precipitate should look like. 